Hello everyone, Mason from Magoosh here. I want to talk to you today about a GMAT question type that maybe you haven't thought much about. The question type I have in mind is called the find the assumption question type, which is a very common subcategory of the critical reasoning section on the GMAT. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mason, you do GRE stuff. What are you doing in a GMAT video? Well, I do know a little bit about the GMAT and quite a bit more about assumptions having gotten my bachelor's and master's degree in philosophy. So follow me a ways down this GMAT rabbit hole and we'll see if we can get to the bottom of these assumption questions. The key to doing well on assumption questions is first understanding the role that assumptions play in an argument. Now arguments are of course extremely diverse. However, the GMAT is a standardized test. So the arguments that you're going to see in the GMAT are relatively formulaic. The typical GMAT argument has three parts to it. We have the premise, the assumption, and the conclusion. The premise is sort of the logical starting point. It's just taken to be agreed upon that this premise is a fact. The conclusion is the point that the author is trying to drive the reader towards in the argument. And the assumption is the link that brings those two things together. Now, even though the assumption is not stated explicitly in the argument, it actually is the cornerstone to the whole argument hanging together. Think about the assumption like a logical bridge that gets you from the premise to the conclusion. So if the premise comprises A and the conclusion comprises B, the assumption is what brings these two pieces together. Here's a quick and simple example. Michaela likes the movie Legally Blonde. Edward will like the movie Legally Blonde. Now, what is the assumption that brings those two things together? Well, that Edward likes the same kind of movies that Michaela likes. Here's a big idea. We can only safely draw the conclusion from the premise if we trust the assumption between them, right? That bridge has to hold up between those two things, otherwise they just don't go together. So, if a statement does not relate the information in the premise directly to the conclusion, then it's not an assumption. When identifying the assumption on these questions, it's important to keep in mind that assumptions tend to be more general and less specific. So for example, let's say our premise is Sean has quality X and our conclusion is Sean has quality Y. Now what's the assumption that links these two things together? Well, we're not going to talk about Sean here. We're going to talk about the qualities X and Y. So we might say something like anyone who has the quality X also has the quality Y. So what we've taken is uh, general information that links these two things together, but we've omitted the specific name or person involved. Now, another tactic for identifying the assumption is to first identify the premise and the conclusion, right? It's kind of hard to know where to find the bridge if we don't know where it's starting and where it's ending. So identify the premise and the conclusion first and then isolate the assumption. Another incredibly helpful tactic for identifying the assumption is what's called the negation test. Now, that sounds really sophisticated and complicated. It's actually very simple. Let's return to that example with Michaela and Edward about the movies. So, if the assumption is that Edward is going to like the same movies that Michaela likes, if that assumption doesn't hold true, if it's not actually correct, then what happens to the entire argument? Well, of course, it falls apart. The argument's no longer valid. It wouldn't be reasonable for us to draw that conclusion that Edward's going to like the movie Legally Blonde if the assumption is not true that Edward and Michaela like the exact same movies. So this is called the negation test, and it's just a question of what happens if this thing isn't true? How does that bear on the argument as a whole? Does that bridge stand or does it collapse? So when you're working through assumption questions, what you should do is go through each answer choice and run that negation test. So for each one, ask, well, if this is not true, what happens to the argument? If the argument falls apart completely, if that assumption is not true, then you've located your assumption. No more work needs to be done. If, however, you negate one of the statements and the conclusion is still plausible, then that's probably not the correct answer. The assumption has to be completely critical to the argument being valid or not valid. There are a few caveats to keep in mind while running this negation test. We have to be sure that we're negating correctly. What do I mean? So let's take this statement, all bats are nocturnal, as an example. 
How would we go about negating this statement? Well, you might think that's not that hard. Let's just say not all bats are nocturnal. But we have to be careful here. Think about what not all implies. That implies that some bats might be nocturnal. Maybe even most bats are nocturnal, but there are a few that are not. And that's not quite the same thing as negating that statement completely. What would we want to do there? We'd want to probably say that no bats are nocturnal. That would be a proper way to negate that statement because that doesn't leave any wiggle room at all for there being some or even most bats being nocturnal. This is important because if we run a test and we do the negation incorrectly, we could run into a situation where because some bats might be nocturnal, this doesn't actually completely make the argument fall apart in the same way that no bats are nocturnal could completely dismantle it. So make sure you're being careful when you run your negation tests and ask, am I truly negating this statement or am I just partially doing so? Let's do a quick recap. What did we cover in today's video? We talked about the three parts of GMAT arguments, the premise, the assumption, and the conclusion. We talked about the assumptions being the cornerstone of arguments. They're the bridges that link premises to conclusions. And without them, the argument falls apart. Then we talked about the negation tactic, where we go through and negate each statement. We see what happens to the argument. And if the argument collapses, then we know we have our assumption identified. All right, my friends, we did it. We went down that rabbit hole. We got to the bottom of assumption questions. If you still have questions about these, drop a comment below. Reach out to us at uh, helpatmagoosh.com or pop onto the Magoosh blog where we have tons of resources to help you go further and further down those rabbit holes and improve your score today.